Hi, my name is John Garfield. This is the Releasing Kings newsletter. It's uh, July 28th, 2013. This week I want to talk to you about uh, you get what you preach. <laughs> there is a shift happening, most of you are aware of that, among many believers in terms of the message that they are hearing. Said from another perspective, the gospel of sin management or the gospel of salvation is being expanded by the Lord to include the gospel of the kingdom. We're not throwing away any of the uh, aspects of Jesus' redemption or work on the cross. God's people are simply moving into a higher realm of maturity, and it's exciting. <clears throat> there are some, there's some trauma in the institutional church because believers gradually understand the gospel of the kingdom and its implications. But I want to suggest to you that whining about pastors and churches is not particularly productive. <clears throat> we all go through a stage in our walk where we are servants and it's very natural to mature and move into our kingly calling and find our mountain. This, that the personal trauma is that the gospel of salvation starts to feel incomplete as we try to identify our kingdom role in our mountain and our culture and make a difference. It's a different sounding message. So I've heard a difference in the sound over the last couple of weeks and just made a mental note and started to make a few notes about uh, what those differences were and uh, that's what I want to talk to you about today. Let's talk about the movement. <clears throat> it's not too uncommon to find those who are vocal about the inadequacies of the local church, but still share the, much of the gospel of salvation. Uh, all I want to do today is simply sharpen our, our message regarding the gospel in this newsletter. The disciples we produce are the product of our message. The gospel of salvation produces servants who are quite content to sit and the gospel of the kingdom produces disciples who find their mountain and build their kingdom. It's, it's, they're naturally more entrepreneurial and proactive and productive, if you want to say it that way. If we're wise, we'll see the maturity process in moving from servant to king and help people build on their salvation instead of having an either-or mentality. That's why I don't, I'm not down on the church. <laughs> I'm very grateful for pastors that... Uh, or evangelistic and help people get saved and mature. I thank God for them. <clears throat> so what's the message? We have a table in the newsletter, so take a look at that and I'll talk you through it. Sometimes it's easier to talk about it than it is to just look at a table. When we tell uh, disciples to uh, surrender and live in contentment, they surrender their dreams and accept their trials and sicknesses as holy. <laughs> And we need to pull them out of their passivity and teach them to rule and reign with Jesus. If we involve them in building the local church, we should also pull back the curtain on the possibilities in the kingdom and show them some examples of how to make a difference in our culture. It's desperately needed right now. We should teach them to experience the presence of God in church and to flow with His wisdom, His Word, His Spirit and the prophetic, all those things uh, happen in a healthy church, but we also need to teach them to carry God's presence into the marketplace and allow those same gifts to function well beyond the church. That's the fun part of being a Christian. We should teach disciples generosity and giving, but we should also teach them to create wealth so that they give from a cup that overflows. We should teach them how, to, how God esteems and loves His bride, the church, but we should also show them how much fun it is to do what the Father's doing outside the four walls in the kingdom. We should teach them to serve faithfully uh, in another man's vision, but we should always do that in the context of how it will serve the preparation for them to execute their own vision, for their own dream, to understand what their own heart's desires are. The purpose of the church is to equip the saints for the ministry in the kingdom. Our message biblically really is the gospel of the kingdom, not the gospel of salvation. <clears throat> salvation and church are pathways to get there. They're very important, but they are doorways, not end states. Even heaven is not the end state for kings. The kingdom is here. Eternity has already started for us. Why is it important to get this message right? <clears throat> well, we get saved by grace apart from any works we can do or offer to the Father. We don't earn our way into salvation, it's a relationship. But once that foundation is laid, <clears throat> the relationship with Jesus leads straight into working with Him. Can you imagine sitting and doing nothing and trying to maintain a relationship with uh, Jesus, uh, the Holy Spirit, who's active all the time, every place? 
I mean, the thought of being a Christian and just sitting in a pew is just, uh, it's violently opposed to what the gospel really teaches, to put it for, honestly. <laughs> We're here for even greater works, more fun, a bigger party. It's the level of authority and influence that we never dream possible. <clears throat> Listen to Ephesians 2, uh, 8 through 10. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, not from yourselves. It's the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. That's why we were created. That's our purpose, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So, that's the reason we're here. And then it goes on. It says, I tell you the truth, anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. This is John 14, verse 12. He will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Now, what if that verse is true? <laughs> okay, It takes a king to believe that. If you're, if, if you're in a servant mentality, sort of a poverty mentality, you would never dream of being that presumptuous. So I want to suggest, and I'm, and I'm looking at this table now, that... Uh, in the gospel of salvation, our, our identity is that we're uh, sinners. We need forgiveness. All our righteousness are as filthy wet rags. That's true, but the, in the gospel of kingdom, we, we learn the, the other verses that pertain to who we are, and that is we're more than conquerors, and we need to use our authority. <clears throat> so what's our expectation? If we're a servant, we should learn to be content in every state. <clears throat> And uh, if, we're, if we graduate to kings, when we graduate to kings, we learn to contend. We're not content, we're contending. Uh, we're dreaming. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Um, we, we have a dream. We understand what God's doing in the kingdom when we're passionate for it. It's just like the zeal of the Father is consuming us. We're excited about it. We give ourselves to it. We're not content. The kingdom is growing. We're in a, in a battle. To, to make a difference. So what's the, what about assertiveness? Uh, a servant would, would uh, focus on surrendering to Jesus, to laying down our lives. And a king focuses on possessing our land and being willing to fight for it and pray for it and believe for it and contend for it. What about money? Well, most of the emphasis on finances for servants is giving, or giving sacrificially and supporting the ministry. And I want to suggest for a king, it's about uh, stewardship is about creating wealth and multiplying and being generous out from a cup that overflows. It's totally different. One's in poverty and one's in abundance. Um, what about vision? Servants are focused on being faithful in another man's vision. And a, and a king is really uh, in a place where he has a vision. He's leading other people in that vision. Uh, how do we approach change? A servant would focus on renewing his mind, doing the right thing, sort of keeping the rules, staying in bounds. <laughs> and uh, a king is, you know, just doesn't live by a set of rules. He's connecting with his own heart's desires and, and receiving permission from the Father uh, to be motivated internally to do the things that God's put on his heart. He naturally does what he enjoys, gets paid for it. I mean, there's a connection between his ministry, his vocation, and his checkbook. What's the focus? For servants, it's usually church. I used to see church as God's vehicle. Uh, I saw it as um, you know, the place where my sanctification and my ministry occurred. And, and as a king, we're simply seeking first the kingdom. It's about nations. It's not about me. It's not about my church. It's what is God doing in the kingdom. And that touches those seven mountains. So what about discipleship? <clears throat> For a servant, discipleship is getting others saved, you know, being submissive, getting involved in church growth. And uh, for a king, it's, it's outside the church. It's retaking those seven mountains of politics and government and education and uh, entertainment and business. And it's, it's all about sending people, helping people connect with their own dreams, finding their role in those seven mountains and connecting with our society. And we realize that the Great Commission is our calling is to make disciples of nations, not just individuals. Worship. 
I love worship. <laughs> in a church, it's with a band, and we learn how to come into the presence of God. And I want to suggest that that's totally valid. That's how we learn to worship. That's how we learn the prophetic. That's how we learn to pray for the sick. It's all, it all happens. It all starts in church. But once we become kings, we learn how to do those exact same things in a mountain. And the result isn't just worship in a church. Worship becomes our creativity, our fruit, our vocational productivity. And we carry the presence of God into the marketplace. We fill rooms with the presence of God. We're not entering the presence of God. We're taking it with us. What about suffering? A servant would tend to accept and endure suffering as the will of God until we get to heaven. And we would just consider that as part of taking up our cross and, and bearing our burdens. On the other hand, <clears throat> a king looks at problems or, or suffering as uh, if there's a lesson to be learned from it, I'll learn the lesson. I'm a son. I can be disciplined. I have no problem with that. But it's for a season. And eventually I'm going to take up my authority and I'm going to change the circumstance. I'm going to recover from the sickness. I'm going to turn the situation around. And I'm, I'm going to become successful. I'm going to bring the presence of God into that situation. What about promotion? It's just unnatural for a servant to accept or receive promotion, or seek it even. And kings realize it's a natural conse consequence of being kingly. We expect to be promoted. Every place I put my foot, I expect the promotion and the anointing of God to reflect His glory, and I, I expect people to respond to it positively. And when, when they do, uh, I offer that to the Lord as worship. I, I just receive it and I give it back to him as worship. So I want to suggest to you that <clears throat> that we understand the gospel is real, is the gospel of the kingdom. And we're not down on churches. We're not an, a down on an emphasis of salvation. We just realize there's more to it than that. We're, we have assignments to accomplish while we're here, we're here on this earth. And it's a lot of fun. It's a party. To, to, to get saved and to do nothing until we get to heaven... That's a boring existence. And I want to suggest to you that this whole concept of releasing kings is a jailbreak, it's a party, it's the satisfaction of knowing you're doing what the Father's called you to do, and it's fun. Amen. Have a great week, many blessings, and I'll see you next time.